before I finish off the pendant and rivet it together, I'm going to show you a few different styles of riveting. First of all, uh, I'm using a piece of brass as the main plate and I'll be riveting on little pieces of copper just to show you the different styles of riveting. So first of all I'm just going to clean the side that's going to go on the inside or the surfaces that are going to go together and first of all drill a hole into the main body of the, uh, the work so in this case it's the brass plate and rather than use a um, center punch I'm using a fine ball burr just to um, help keep the drill steady as I drill through. I'm using a 1.2 mil drill for this particular job because the wire I'm using is 1.3 so I'm a little bit smaller than the wire. So this is the, the wire or the pin the pin silver and I need that to be really tight so I'm just wobbling the drill in the hole I could use a parallel burr or a fisher burr to just open it out a little bit but the drill is fine to use so that should be nice and tight now with a bit of force that will go through and you need the the fit to be really tight to make a good joint. Now you need to use the main part as a template for uh, locating the, the um, hole for the second part. Uh, in other words if you're make, making a piece of jewellery you can't just drill the two parts and put it together and hope that it's lined up properly. You have to use the uh, the one piece that you've drilled as a template to find where the hole should be. So with that I'm just going to mark on there and go through the same process just all burr. And before I put them together, again make sure it's nice and flat, so just put some emery over it. And again if it's a piece of jewellery you've got to pre-polish, get it all finished first. And the two outside faces now need to be countersunk. So I'm using a heart burr, you can use a setting burr, you can use a large round burr even as long as it makes a nice countersink area on the inside of the hole. So that's now uh, got an area for the head of the rivet to go into. So do that on both parts. It doesn't have to be uh, a lot cut out of it, just enough to uh, for the pin head to fill in and make a really strong joint. So now I'll put the parts together. I need to force the pin in because it's really tight. Um, I need to just flatten the rivet head. And there needs to be in this case, because of the size of the pin and the size of the hole, um, having one millimeter overhang from the surface there, and that's on both sides. So just cut that off and flatten that, and then just check I've got a millimeter on both sides. Now this step is not used all the time um, but if you're working on an in intricate piece um, it, it's a really good idea to do this it just helps the rivet to uh, fold over into the countersinking 
all I'm doing is I'm putting a little divot in the middle of the pin so when you hammer it the edge is forced to move out and fold out quite easy and just makes a quicker easier job of riveting so that's all you need to do before you start hammering it I've got my steel block and I've got a riveting hammer and this one's got a nice clean face on it the face is just very slightly curved so that it's not going to contact all of the metal around the rivet and the other end has got a wedge shape it's quite um, quite narrow there so it's good for intricate riveting so I've got it uh, flat onto the steel block and I'll just start the rivet but make sure you keep turning it around because you don't want too much rivet on one side and not the other so make sure it's nice and even If you've got um, a piece that you're working on and it's too hard to get the hammer in there or you, you're frightened of damaging the surface then you can use a punch. So this is just one that I've made myself. That's pretty much it. So we'll just clean that up and uh, the sign of a good rivet is not to see a sign of the rivet so you shouldn't be able to see a circle around it should be nice and flush so I'll just give that a clean up so that's a flush rivet and that's a really firm joint now so a very good uh, type of rivet for most jewellery and of course if you're trying to do a completely invisible job then you'd use the same material uh, for the pin. Now for the next one I'm doing a, uh, I call it a mushroom rivet, it's um, a dome shaped uh, rivet so you're making a feature of the uh, rivet head and I've got an old punch here and it's so soft enough steel that I can actually burr into it and I'm making a, um, a concave area. So the process is much the same, um, but when we come to putting it together, there's a slight difference. So I'll get it up to that stage, and then I'll show you what to do. Now this time the countersinking is just minimal. You don't need to do an awful lot. Now before I fit it together. The difference is on this one is that it's going to be two moving parts so you could bypass this if you wanted a fixed rivet with fixed parts uh, but just to show you something different these two parts will move afterwards so just drill through that And I've got just a little bit more hanging out than the previous rivet, so approximately one and a half mil on both sides. Just flatten that off a little bit. Got there. Now back onto the steel block and 
the puncture I just made earlier you can see I've just made a concaved it's almost like a beading tool a large beading tool um, if your steel's too hard just heat it up to red hot and it should you should be able to burr into it quite easily so the choice again is you could have one flat rivet at the bottom and a feature mushroom rivet on top um, I'm going to have two feature rivet heads on top and bottom for this one so get my riveting hammer and again it's just a very slow turn and tap operation and it's a good idea to make a few of these punches of various sizes to, so that you can use it on different thicknesses of pin and once I've got the rivet heads kind of happening I can kind of Swirl it around and just get a nice form on the rivet head. I'm being careful not to contact the surface of the, the metal whilst I'm doing this. pretty much it and now all I need to do is just burn the paper off pickle it and then we'll have a play with that see if it's worked So that's turning quite nicely and the joint is really strong as well. So another option for riveting and of course as I said before if you just wanted a solid rivet but with the button stroke mushroom shaped ends then you just bypass the uh, stage of slipping a piece of card between and there again if you don't want too much of a gap there I used a business card card which is reasonably thick um, you can just use some very fine paper or tracing paper in there and still do the same job but it would be a, a tighter fit and uh, less easy to move as it is there so now on to another style of riveting which um, I've used a few times it's um, it's really good for uh, there's a certain finding that I make and this this is uh, part of the process It's making a tube rivet so again uh, the stages are very similar use the um, the base plate to drill and then mark onto the the other plate so I'll go through the same process so you don't need to see those stages and I'll take it from where they both drilled and uh, will we'll then fit the tube the tube is 2.2 mil in diameter, so I need to open these holes out to fit the tube. So I'm using a, a, a tapered burr. It's um, going to help me open the hole up quicker. Open the holes out to fit the tube really tight. put them together and this time there's no need to counter sink the holes so that fits really tight into the holes now I'm going to file to around about one millimetre maybe even less hanging out but again it depends on the style or a piece of jewellery that you're working on again it doesn't need much work to make it a very firm fixing
I'm just using a comb bird just to open the hole a little bit. And it's a very simple mat. It's probably the easiest rivet to do because we're just going to force the opening of the tube on the uh, or the edge of the tube to open uh, slightly, and it doesn't need much of an opening to to fix itself. Now, again, I'll just tap a little on one side, then the other side. Now, if the tube is sealed then you're not going to have any issues with the joint. If it's not sealed it's going to open up so make sure it's been soldered if it's one that you're making. And that's pretty much it for a tube rivet so you can stick a wire in there or a jump ring or whatever. You can actually finish off with a small uh, doming punch and just really sort of work on the uh, lip folding right over. Uh, this tube wasn't actually soldered so it's starting to split but it gives you an idea of how to do a tube rivet. And of course with this type of rivet you don't really need a hammer you can just burnish from the inside and the lip will fold out. Now this can be filed down to a reasonable length as well. The next rivet I'll show you is a suspended or platform rivet. It's where you need a gap between the two plates. There again it's the same process up until fitting the pin so just go through the same steps. I've now got the rivet ready to go and before I put it together I'm just going to put this tube in place and this will separate the two sections and depending on the design or what your purpose is uh, you can make that any length you like up to a certain uh, extent of course but um, we'll just put that in place now I have um, counters on both sides of the plates as well so I'll just push that in and cut cut it off to length and I've got a, just over a mil each side because um, you've got a few choices of how you want to finish this now and if you're going to go through th these exercises then you pick your favourite way of finishing the job off for me I quite like the dome shape. I thought it looked pretty good. So that's the way I'm going to finish this one off. And that's how it looks. That's going to suit quite a few different designs, especially if you're into moving jewellery or articulated jewellery. It's a great rivet to, to use. So now that I've shown you different riveting techniques, it's back to the real job of finishing this one off. There's a good chance of damaging some of the nice surfaces or uh, finishes that I've put on the four claw setting there. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to use my Dremel and do it that way. I'm not even going to risk a file in there because it's too close to the uh, claws here so I'm just going to flatten it with a round burr 
and still I'm using that little div divot technique. I'll do that on both sides. So you can see if I tried to do it with a punch and hammer, yes I could get away with it, but I would probably have to ask a friend just to tap the end of the punch for me so that I could hold the whole thing um, onto the mini anvil and make sure it's positioned right and make sure I don't slip off the, the rivet and damage the surface. But I do have the tool and I'm going to use it. See how easy the metal moves. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see better. Now I'll just clean up the rivet heads and we're done on this one.